it's time to talk about the craftiest fighters in the UFC. And we're not just talking about any fighters. I'm talking vets, guys that have been around the block that due to their physical decline, have had to resort to using clever tactics and deceptive strategies to outsmart their opponents. We're not talking about spinning wheel kicks or flying knees. I'm talking about flat-footed, big ugly jabs down the pipe. But don't let an old man fool you. These seasoned vets may have a couple tricks up their sleeve. So make one mistake and you'll be looking up at the bright lights. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at the UFC's craftiest vets. Jan Blachowicz, one of the grittiest crafters in the UFC. At 40 years old, the former champion is still making waves today, still proven to be one of the best strikers on earth, as shown in his fights with Alex Pereira, or even Magomed Ankalaev. He's a big grifty crafter, who's also known for his fight day superstitions, like getting a big bowl of mac and cheese before heading to the arena. Blachowicz also stresses keeping calm on fight week. While other fighters are training and stressing about their upcoming fight, Jan can be seen enjoying himself as a tourist heading to local hotspots, like the Hoover Dam, or even the local rodeo. One thing's for sure, he sure knows how to smell the roses. Now despite no longer being in his prime, given that he's about as flat-footed as you could possibly get, moving around like an absolute tortoise, and having a hunchback like that guy from Notre Dame, Blahovich has more than a couple of tricks up his sleeve. And if there's anything he's been able to maintain, it's that legendary Polish power. Once again, his weapons may not look all fancy, but they're incredibly effective like his famous lead kick to the body, or a big ugly low kick, maybe just a simple jab, and some sneaky combinations on the feet that'll make you scratch your head wondering how the old man covered the distance so quickly. Jan Blachowicz doesn't have to try to go in there to prove a point. Like a crafty veteran, he's not trying to be the hero, and he certainly doesn't shy away from a stinker. After two months of talking about how he was gonna stand up with Alex Pereira to test his striking, he dove at the legs the first second he could. Jan Blachowicz, like many other veterans, knows fully damn well that it's not about just going in there to put on a show or to, to prove a point. It's about getting the win. Where a young gun may go out there trying to hit a home run every time, a crafty veteran chokes up on that bat and puts that ball in play. There's no ego. They'll take a sacrifice bunt down the line rather than a home run any day of the week. In other words, Blahovich has mastered the basics. A couple of ugly shots here and there and you have yourself a champion. I mean, just look at what he did to school the late great Israel Adesanya back in the spring of 2021. The 38-year-old Blahovich went into that fight being massively overlooked. The talk of the town was Israel Adesanya, coming off of a beautiful win over Paulo Costa. And with a big boost of confidence, he went into his next fight with Blahovich and he tried to style on him, throwing all of these flashy techniques, question mark kicks, all these fancy smanchy feints. And while Joe Rogan and the casuals sitting at home may have been creaming their pants, watching their poster boy prance around like a tennis player, Blahovich simply sat back, stood his ground, and kept his composure making sure to keep light on his lead leg so he could check those leg kicks, a typical sign of a crafty veteran. And with only the use of a jab, a lead kick to the body, and a big ugly low kick, the cool, calm, and collected Jan Blahovich remained champion, outstriking Adesanya comfortably for the first three rounds, before deciding to mix it up and land a couple of takedowns in the latter half of the fight to put the nail in the coffin, one of the craftiest performances in UFC history. Jan Blahovich will forever be remembered as the man to school Israel Adesanya, the Flashmeister on the feet. Kamaru Usman. Like Jan Blahovich, he's still a crafty vet that fights at an elite level. At one time, Usman was one of the strongest, most physically imposing fighters on the roster. But these days, due to the wear and tear from his many five round championship fights, his knees are shot. In fact, they're so unbelievably shot that Kamaru had to get surgery to install cobblestones to keep them stable. And despite still having to walk down the stairs backwards, Kamaru was able to make things work. With a crafty straight jab, an ability to impose his will, Kamaru knows a thing or two about being effective. And of course, don't forget those foot stomps and knees to the body in the clinch. He's an absolute crafty grafster who's got a tool bag deeper than the local carpenter. Now we know he got knocked out by Leon Edwards, and ever since he's turned into a wobbler. After all, his pre-fight meal consists of pasta and peach cobbler. Go figure, that's gotta be what he ate before he fought Hamzat Chemayev, taking the fight on a week and a half's notice. After all, what's an extra loss to a crafty vet? Now Hamzat Chemaev is one of the most hyped up up and coming prospects in UFC history. A young bull, tearing through the UFC and dominating everyone in his path. And it certainly looked like he was going to do just that to Kamaru Usman, because he took him down and dominated him in the first. But if there's anyone that knows how to weather a storm, it's Kamaru. Staying calm in the first round and just biding his time. He came back in the second and made him shed his pants, noticing that Hamzat wasn't really doing much. 
meaning he must have been tired. A lot of guys would have left him off the hook and just worried too much about the takedowns coming back in their direction, but Kamaru started marching him down and put a jab in his face, knowing that if he was tired, this is only going to make it worse. And in the third, he put that famous Usman jab on him and paired it with that famous unrelenting march forward. And from there on out, it was total domination, fraud checking one of the most overhyped UFC fighters in history and winning two rounds out of three against a guy that had a full training camp. This was such a good old fashioned fraud check, proving that Usman's no longer just old, he's crafty. <laughs> Don't let it bully you, son. Dominic Cruz, one of the least dangerous men in UFC history, and although he's known for being an absolute pillow puncher, they don't call him the Bantamweight Goat for nothing. The Dominators made a career off of being defensively sound, and in his prime, his footwork and head movement would have you thinking that you were in the Matrix. But today, the former champion is riddled with injuries, and he significantly slowed down, but he can still be seen dipping and slipping out of the way of punches and giving back some of his own against some of the up-and-coming fighters in the UFC, like Casey Kenny, or even other vets, like Pedro Munoz. Dominic Cruz's performance against Pedro Munoz was the epitome of crafty, for he got dropped in the first round badly and had to recover and find his way back into it. But by the time the third round hit, Dominic Cruz was flowing, slipping and dipping and ripping, landing his absolute pillow hands on Pedro Munoz. But unfortunately for Dominic, he got chinned in his very next fight. Jim Miller, the winningest fighter in UFC history, 40 years old with a record of 36 and 17, He's been in the UFC since 2008, one of the very few vets that's been able to keep his durability all the way up until his 40s. This dude is an absolute menace. At 40 years old, still knocking people dead left and right. Four out of his last five fights he's won, two by knockout and two by submission. They don't call him the apex legend for nothing. Jim Miller can often be seen fraud checking the up and coming youngsters that think they're gonna steamroll him just cause he's short and built like a hobbit. As I said, Jim Miller is one of those crafty vets that's been able to keep his durability and he makes a point to make that a part of his fighting style as he goes in there and imposes his will like no other, often taking advantage over young guns in their UFC debuts. After all, these are guys that have the octagon jitters. It's their first time being under the bright lights. Their family and friends are at home watching and they want nothing more than to have a nice, clean performance. And on top of that, they're terrified of losing. So Miller, who's already basically tenured into the UFC, he's less dependent on the outcome and therefore, can fight more freely. He knows that if he drags them into a scrap, his experience will allow him to stay sharp in the pocket. After all, if you make these UFC debutants stray away from their game plans and drag them into a style of fight they didn't expect, they simply don't have the experience to adapt and usually end up gassing out and waking up to the bright lights looking up at Jim Miller running around the octagon. A true grizzled craftsman. Now Jim attributes his longevity in the UFC to a healthy diet. And while the young bucks are out there suffering on their meager bro diets, consisting of broiled chicken and broccoli, Miller's out here eating hearty. After all, cutting weight doesn't mean you have to be hungry. A crafty vet doesn't have to punish himself more than he needs to. He prides himself on being a woodsman, often hunting for high quality meats. And it just so happens that he has himself a cookbook. Some say it might be able to compete with the likes of Lucas Tracy's real food cookbook. But I say we may have to pump the brakes. But one thing's for sure, he's not only a woodsman, he's an absolute craftsman. Neil Magny, he's literally a vet, but he's also known for putting on a clinch vest. And although it certainly is boring to watch, don't ask this guy to be entertaining. He knows how to get himself a win, often getting a hold of overly ambitious young guns and taking the wind out of their sails, slowing things down. These guys think they're gonna get in there and scrap. They think they're gonna throw hands and have a good old fashioned fight, but not with Neil Magny, no. This guy knows how to turn it into an absolute shit fest. And before you know it, you've got the entire crowd booing. But hey, at least he goes home with a paycheck. And that's what it's about. He's doing his thing. And if you don't think it works, well then how the hell is he past GSP on the all-time list for most wins of all time at welterweight? Paul Craig, known for having the worst stand-up across all of humanity. I like to call him the Kraken because he's got this uncanny ability to get destroyed for 14 minutes only to jump out of nowhere with a submission faster than the speed of light. He's an absolute submission meister, with wins over the likes of Jamal Hill, Magomed Ankalaev, and Nikita Krylov. Like Jan Blahovic and Kamaru Usman, Paul Craig's been able to make it work at the elite level as well. Paul Craig's also known for mental warfare, for this guy will stare intensely into his opponent's soul during his pre-fight face-offs, 
only to go out there and pull guard like an absolute pansy. But hey, I'll give it to him. He makes it work. Eventually, his opponents get tired of his bullshit and they follow him up to the ground, often letting his opponent kick his ass, like we saw most recently against Brendan Allen. As I said, a crafty veteran knows how to weather a storm, knowing that even if his opponent reigns superior over him for 14 and a half minutes, all it takes is one little slip up for him to sprawl out his legs and get himself a submission. So shout out to Paul Craig. Matt Brown, 42 years old, The Immortal, a nickname fitting perfectly for the 30 plus fight UFC veteran who's currently second all time in knockouts. He's a fighter's fighter. He's not here for the flash and he's not here for the bullshit. Put a microphone and a camera in his face and you're getting daggers. But put this man in the octagon and you may get yourself a show. The guy looks like an old worn out leather boot and he hits like one too. You see, most guys usually start to lose their punching power as they age, but Brown's been able to maintain his. As they say, beware of an old man in a profession where men usually die young. Because if you think you're going in there to fight some old cobbled down gray hair having geezer, you'll be looking up at the bright lights. Because if you make a mistake with this guy, you'll get slept on your fucking face. And now it's time to introduce the craftiest veteran of them all, Edson Barboza. Once known for his incredible athleticism, his dynamic kicks, and blistering speed, Barboza has evolved into a true grizzled craftsman. He now employs a tactical game plan, utilizing his wealth of experience to outsmart his opponents. Now this was most apparent in his most recent win over Sadiq Yusuf. Yusuf, a 30-year-old up-and-coming featherweight, had Barboza rocked and hurt early. In fact, he had Barboza wobbling all over the place. But Edson, like any crafty vet, made himself a real tough out surviving the first round and coming out in the second and started working the jab. Now, of course, Sadiq Yusuf, expecting Barboza to throw all those fancy schmancy kicks, had to deal with a simple old jab down the pipe. And before you knew it, Barboza snuck himself back into the fight. And in the third, it got even craftier. Barboza, now conditioning Sadiq Yusuf to just expect a nice crispy jab down the pipe, ended up throwing his first flashy technique of the fight, letting go a spinning wheel kick to the dome, which had Sadiq Yusuf on Crip Street. Now Edson got a little ahead of himself and made a big mistake, trying to jump on a submission instead of opting for ground and pound. But nonetheless, Barboza realized his mistake and kept himself cool, calm, and collected in the fourth round, having an incredibly close back and forth battle with Sadiq. But then in the last minute of that fourth round, he picked up the volume, knowing that when it's a close round, you've got to increase your output to cater to the judges. But it didn't stop there for he came out in the fifth round and struck with Sadiq Yusuf for about a minute before totally emptying the gas tank and switching it up, resorting to ragdolling Sadiq Yusuf, putting every single last drop of his energy into takedowns just to frustrate Sadiq, knowing that he was ahead on the scorecards and Sadiq's only chance was, as I said, a fluky knockout. To this day, that has to be the craftiest performance I've ever seen. Weathering a storm and battling back from adversity, conditioning your opponent with crispy, simple jabs down the pipe, and then after you condition them with those simple ugly jabs, turning into an absolute flashman, rocking them, making a mistake, realizing your mistake, and then being an absolute craftsman in the last two rounds as well. So Edson Barboza is the craftiest fighter in the UFC, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time. What is up guys, it's Lucas Tracy MMA here, and I wanna let you guys know that I have something for you, and that's a real food cookbook, because if you're walking around looking like Chris Dawkins, you gotta get that weight off. I don't know if you think you're DC or something, but most people usually don't perform at their best when they're walking around with 30% body fat. So if you're trying to lean out and you still want to eat good, tasty comfort foods, well, you could check out my Real Food Cookbook because I've made it a purpose to have good, tasty foods that you can still eat just without all the processed bullshit, without all the processed ingredients like soy and seed oils. So guys, check out the Real Food Cookbook. Use code MMA for 30% off. The link is in my description. Don't forget that discount.